Hi there, Chris Conniff here with Lucid Coaching. Thanks for tuning in to my latest video blog. I've just published a new written blog post called Either Way It's Okay, You Wake Up With Yourself. And I stole that title from a Billy Joel song. And if you check out the written post, you'll see the backstory on that. I had a little synchronicity that involved that song that led me to use it as a title for this blog post. So the blog post is about a metaphysical theory called counterparts. Uh, counterparts are similar to the idea of soulmates, but we tend to limit the idea of soulmates to the romantic context, and sometimes we expand it to be a close friend or a close family member. But the idea with counterparts is that we have soul connections in the physical world that are not necessarily tied to bonds of family or friendship. So you might think of it this way, just like in the physical world you have siblings and cousins, that in the spiritual realm you may have siblings and cousins as well, and you may have sort of a hidden relationship with these people. And one idea with counterpart theory is that these figures, these people in waking life that we have these relationships with, will often show up as a recurring dream figure. And one hint that someone may be a counterpart is one, if they're a recurring figure, and then two, if they're sort of an unexpected recurring figure. In other words, you expect to dream about your wife or husband, you expect to dream about your close family friends, family and friends, but you don't necessarily expect to dream about an acquaintance from 10 years ago. Uh, but when they suddenly start showing up, it may cause you to think, okay, why is this person showing up so often in my dreams? So basically, the dream state gives us an opportunity to do some detective work, to try to see if, if we might have a hunch from waking life that we seem to have a connection with someone. The symbolism in the dreams will sometimes help us figure that out. So what kind of symbolism do you look for with counterpart dreams? Well, um, I usually look for dreams that feature shared space, sometimes confined spaces. So a common element I find with counterpart dreams is a bedroom, because a bedroom is a confined space, but it also can represent intimacy. And in waking life, we might erroneously just limit that to the idea of romance or even a sexual relationship. But the bedroom could represent, in a dream, simply the idea of spiritual intimacy, the idea of having a connection with someone. Uh, other shared space dreams would be, and these are examples from my own dreams, sharing a swimming lane with someone. Uh, and I had another one where I'm sharing a bobsled with someone. So confined space, that's one element. If someone's a recurring figure, if you start to notice that. Another element, and this is sort of fun to play with, is you'll start to see the idea of double, the idea of something twice or something very similar to each other. So I have one recurring dream figure. He's a business acquaintance of mine. I'm going to call him Adam. And I had a series of dreams with him back in 2012. You know, very odd because he's not a close uh, friend by any means. I really would hesitate to even say we're friends as much as we're friendly. We're sort of acquaintances. But I had a series of seven different dreams with him in the course of nine months. And after that, he's shown up from time to time as a dream figure, but never quite with the same frequency of that period. But I had some interesting symbolism in these dreams. So in one of these dreams, we are, I'm walking down the street, and I encounter him, and I look at my feet, and one of my shoes is a dress shoe, and the other shoe is a sneaker. And then I look at Adam, and I see that he has a dress shoe on one foot and a sneaker on the other foot. And so there's a sort of like odd wardrobe matching going on. So that was sort of a double element. Then in another dream with him, uh, we're sharing an office together. So there's a confined space, a shared office. And then we each have a desk and the two desks are facing each other. So there's sort of a double element here with the two desks facing each other. And then there's also a bookshelf. And in the dream, Adam labels one bookshelf with his name and then the other bookshelf with my name. So there's sort of this odd sort of like double element going on in a confined space. And the fact that I have these other dreams to sort of support the idea leads me to think that he is a candidate as a potential counterpart, someone who I have a hidden spiritual connection with. 
Um, another element to look for in dreams, to look for you know the counterpart idea, is the idea of a mirror. So an example of that is uh, a different recurring dream figure, but yet another one that's unexpected. I'm going to call him Charlie. And there's a dream where he and I are in a bathroom. We're both at a mirror, and we're both trying to shave in the same mirror. And it's a small little mirror, and we're sort of crowding in together so we can both see our own reflections in the mirror. Um, and so there you got you have the mirror element, which is a counterpart hit, and then you also have a confined space, a bathroom. Uh, and interestingly, I mentioned earlier the dream about I was in a bobsled, sharing a bobsled with someone. Well, that was another dream with Charlie. So there again, I have more than one dream that sort of is suggestive of connection or sharing a confined space. Um, beyond mirror dreams, another dream element to look for is the idea of materials related to identity. So, for example, I had a dream once where I was in a hotel and for some reason or another I had stored my hotel key in my luggage and I go to get the key and I notice the luggage tag and when I look at the luggage tag instead of saying my name you know, it has the first and last name of someone else and this is actually a friend of mine from Waking Life who actually now lives in another city and I'd say now he's, a, he's really more of an acquaintance because I haven't talked to him in over 10 years but at one point in time I knew him a little bit here in Charleston so, you know, the luggage tag is a good, you know, playing with an identity symbol. Um, it makes me think that it might be an identity connection or a spiritual connection there. In another dream, I am working on some travel paperwork, uh, including a, like a passport application. And for whatever reason, I have a name tag and I put this name tag on, except the name on the tag is not mine. It's, I'm going to use a different name here. We're going to say this person's name is Fred. And so when I put his name tag on, um, you know, it's like, wait, why am I putting his name tag on? And, you know, why is this part of working on a passport application? And that dream is supported by the fact that this is the same person who I dreamed about sharing the swimming lane. So you look for multiple dreams with symbolism that suggest some sort of connection between you. So... If you want to really dig into this, I recommend you take a look at the written post. This is really just a brief little preview, a short little companion video to go with the written post. Uh, and I have a few extras there in the written post, um, and I think you'd enjoy checking it out. But thanks for taking the time to tune in, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.